This is an electric car, but the difference about this electric car is you can fill it up to a range of about 500 kilometers in four minutes because it's powered by hydrogen. So I'm here just outside Heathrow Airport. In fact, you'll probably hear a large jet fly over any second now. Uh, BMW have been developing this technology for about 20 years, particularly focusing on fuel cells for about 15 years. And not to get too complicated on it, because I don't really understand all the molecule business myself, but uh, you get hydrogen gas. It will take six kilograms in this car. It mixes with oxygen. And the only thing that comes out of the exhaust pipe, because there is an exhaust pipe in this car, is water. Unlike a battery electric vehicle where you have to fill it up at a fixed point, you basically load this car with hydrogen and it uses it on the way and charges the car on the way. So there's an awful lot less sitting around time. Uh, it is doing, on our journey today, about 1.5 kilograms of hydrogen per 100 kilometers. So six kilograms in the tank, you get the idea of the range. Uh, one thing that's very interesting about it is it's it, much more efficient in cold temperatures. So the heating of the cabin, for example, comes off the exhaust. So you're not using the battery to do that. Um, it's, it, it could potentially be overkill for passenger cars, but uh, many transportation companies, for example, are certainly interested. Large agricultural vehicles that, you know, just it's not practical for them to have massive uh, battery cells on board. So I'm just bringing around this. So this is obviously, look, to look at it, a very normal BMW X5. It doesn't look any different, really, apart from the massive teethy grill with the blue. Uh, housing around it and your hydrogen pumps. I think there's 12 in total of these sites in the UK. We don't have any in Ireland, obviously. 300 of them in places like China, um, 150 ish in America. But just a quick video today just to see, you know, are we focusing just on electrification with charging points or are there alternatives? Ron Atkinson, for example, wrote an article about this uh, in The Guardian a few weeks ago and people were kind of up in arms about it. And from my perspective, the man was just saying, should we look at alternatives? And that's exactly what we're doing today. So we're gonna fill this up in about four minutes, hit the road and we'll see what exactly is a hydrogen vehicle like to drive. Oh, that sounds terrifying. <laughs> so all it's doing is it, so it puts a bit in, does some pressure checks just to make sure that uh, it's all safe to keep going and then it starts. Oh, right. oh, I can see the kilogram has gone in, yeah, it's not yeah. quite one kilogram, yes. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. How long would it take to fill if it was actually empty? Uh, if it was empty, it would, uh, this is a six kilogram tank, it would take like, like four or five minutes, something along those, oh, right, okay. along those lines. And nothing to hold on to, nothing to press? Like a you problem. don't have to hold on, which again is, so one of the challenges is when people, could, because you don't have to be here, you then you know, <laughs> set, get on your phone, you walk yeah. away, you go and grab a coffee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the danger is you come back and you think about it and you get in your car and you drive off sort of thing. So you can see it's busy working its way through its system, doing its fueling. So there's one kg gun in. Yeah. Yeah, just under one kg. Yeah, I imagine it will be around about that sort of level because obviously it's only just It was only just slightly off, yeah. Just slightly off. Thank they you. Are. So it's done. it's done. So now if you pull the blue bit back. Okay. So just the blue bit pulls back. There you are. Take it off. No, no. Put it back this, in Yes, no, nothing. Very unceremonious. There you go. That's straightforward. No, it's very neat looking. It. It's like LPG or something. It's like a sort of an LPG mm -hmm. nozzle, yeah. So, very cool. I need to and then roll on the next one, please. That's easy. So, Bob is on this trip with me. Um, so, I just thought it'd be actually easier because we could nearly have a chat about it. So, for, well, first of all, I talked to you about the driving dynamics of the BMW X5. <laughs> uh, it basically feels like a BMW X5 with a battery. A so, very fast one. Yeah, it's got 395 brake horsepower, 700 Newton meters of torque. So you're not wanting for anything. Mark has to think hard here because he's on the wrong side of the car for Britain. In or a left hand, yeah. In a German car in England. Just give me a couple of minutes and I'll get used. So I'm going right here. Yep. Oh, and there's a Toyota up my backside. Toyota drivers in England, very aggressive. <laughs> So when you plant it, as you'd expect an X5 to do, it really does. takes off and it does that Hans Zimmer thing that BMW have. Whoop. Really, it's torquey though. My God, that plane is right there. <laughs> right beside Heathrow, it's like, <laughs> wow. 
So what can I tell you? Well, the, the display says uh, percentage of hydrogen used. So we're up to 100 now because we just filled up. Uh, you filled up the car. It took a minute. Just plug it in. Done. Currently, it's 23 kilo, uh, sorry, it's 23 euro per kilogram of hydrogen. The more it's used, they say, the more the price will come down. Mm. And uh, the company, what are they called again? Air, Air Products. Air Products. They've been in Ireland and the UK for 65 years, the company where we were today. Um, they were asked lots of questions like, can they take over existing petrol and diesel stations yes in theory but they can't use the pump uh, the storage tanks underground tanks they'd yeah. have to be converted and you can store hydrogen overground doesn't have to be underground um, obviously there's a big thing for agriculture and trucks to to use this because they JCB, simply JCB's done yeah, it yeah. too like they can't if you imagine a, a massive Volvo truck carrying whatever you're strawberries from the Netherlands back to Ireland you know it's just not practical for them to have to be a BEV too heavy not enough range you'd be stuck at charge point how long would it yeah. take to charge up an electric truck your strawberries would be gone off like they'd be mouldy by the time they got to you practicalities don't all work out some of them will maybe in 10 years time we'll be having a different conversation but to decarbonise your fleet as the guy just put it there in the, in the system to decarbonise the whole fleet, we need a multifaceted approach to this. And he reckons that hydrogen and electric, that we need to have the both solutions happening at once, is a better solution than just trying to drive everything into pure electric. Um, and and that's a really good point because they weren't at any by any means kind of saying hydrogen is the only way. No, no, it wasn't. Just you know, that, yeah. It was a combination of at least uh, these two solutions and. They reckon we'll achieve things like zero carbon footprints in certain industries quicker mm. if they have both. Also, another point he made was the amount of data centres in Ireland, they could be powered by hydrogen. Uh, and when you're creating enough of it to power them, your byproduct of like 10% of that energy could be used for vehicles on the road. Mm. And so, with the industry standard of 700 PSI, was what they're talking about, fueling these cars and trucks from that we'll all use the same filling stations. There'll Which be a demand there. puts less pressure on the national grid then also. So, uh, very interesting just to have a look at it as, a, as an alternative. To drive this car, just, you've driven it as well, just feels like a, <laughs> yeah. just feels like you're driving an EV. Feels like a high powered X5. Um, you'd still have potentially range anxiety, uh, especially at the moment because there's 12 of these stations in the UK, there's none in Ireland, mm. so. <laughs> It would be kind of stressful worrying about will I make the next one, but I suppose it's all about economies of scale and. Uh, You're going that way. Uh, can I go straight as well? You're going all the way around. I don't know, I'm sure. It'll redirect us anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you're going out that road over there. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's got 400 brake horsepower, it'll be grand. You can. <laughs> Like a little salmon. Hello, BMW. Stream. Yeah, we totaled the car. <laughs> but we only made 100 of them. Yeah, you got 99 now. <laughs> 99 chances. 99 problems. <laughs> but this ain't one of them. <laughs> and a 9X5 ain't one. Uh, also, we both like how the uh, lights go amber before they go. Uh, yeah, that's genius. It's green here in the UK. I don't know, like if you're watching this in the UK, you're like, yeah. But at the same time, uh, we're not used to it. It gives you a tiny bit of preparation time now for the green. I still think you're going around another one, eh? Yeah, <laughs> that one over there. I'm a tourist. 8.30, 8.30, that one, yeah. There we go. Down, turn left and continue Down them 25. The way you say 8.30 sounds even more Irish because we're in England. That's weird. <laughs> um, so, it's a case of, uh, one of the questions I asked the guys were, uh, why are there not more manufacturers looking at hydrogen? And it's a simple case of, they don't necessarily see it at the moment because there isn't the stations there aren't enough uh, factories being able to produce it at the moment for cars now we did say Hyundai are also interested again Toyota obviously are on board Honda the MW. coming back um, Volkswagen Group don't seem to be interested at the moment they're not sure 
Yeah, I see that. And it's hard to predict because it's another fuel source. So it would require another division of your uh, of your system. Now, BMW have been doing this for 20 years, as you said in the press uh, thing. He was, they're actually going to make direct uh, hydrogen to the engine. So that was the idea back there. But they gave it up about 15 years ago, and now they started doing hydrogen fuel cell. Honda were in it 20 years ago. They stopped at the clarity, but that's coming back. They're, they're going to reignite that whole system as well. So there, are, there is interest. If Hyundai are doing it, then Kia is going to do it because they're the same company essentially. Yeah. So that you're going to get two companies for one there. And, and BMW, if they develop the technology, 15 years experience, they might be able to sell it on to Toyota, yeah. whose Toyota is part of their company as well. So you've got a lot of things happening in a very sensible way. And for you, the end user, and for us as well, it means that if there was enough hydrogen fuel stations, it's a direct move from the fuel you use now, petrol and diesel, putting a hose into a tank and filling it up, to hydrogen. You won't even notice the difference. It's so easy, click, leave it there, it pressurizes, on click, walk away, and you're done. It's exactly the same as you do with petrol and diesel right now. And just again to reiterate, it is about 23 euro per kilogram at the moment. It, it will, there's no, it should, it will come down. And the other point made was, in 10 years time, how much will a litre of diesel yeah. for petrol cost? Because it ain't going to get that drastically cheaper. You know, they're going to keep pushing the taxes up on it because it's a carbon emitter. They're going to keep doing mad things to get you back out of those petrol and diesel cars. And if there's a way that we can keep the speed of movement, because uh, uh, electric cars, you're building a sort of a two hour window into your day if you're on a long drive for charging and it means you spend more because you go to a petrol station you plug in you're going to be stuck there for maybe 45 minutes to an hour an hour and a half whatever long you want to be there there's coffee and lunch you'll buy a twix that you didn't even want yeah then you're fatter than you were before this is why <laughs> i said drive an electric car put on tons of weight like <laughs> um, or you bring your lunch like i see some people yeah <laughs> we're having a <laughs> A packed lunch, why? Because you have to charge the car. <laughs> Stop the Which cars. does sound like madness. Um, yeah. But, and that, that is for people doing longer, uh, much longer journeys. Um, so look, food for thought, if nothing else. It's fascinating food for thought, I think. It's fascinating where the car industry's going, right? I mean, you think of how many changes we've darted around with for the last few years. Diesel was a solution to everything. Then petrol now is a solution, PHEVs, electric cars, now hydrogen is back again. And, in the news. It's fascinating and a rare look at, at the pointy bleeding edge of where we are right now. And hydrogen has been around for so long, it's actually not future technology, it is now technology. We're just looking at it and trying to get it roll out. It needs investment, of course. And the byproduct of all of our buses being hydrogen would be to be enough fuel stations for your pet, for your ordinary hydrogen car as well. So you'd have more cars on the road. I went to a talk with the astronaut Chris Hadfield yesterday and he said something that just kind of hit home one he was talking for two hours and I remember lots of what he said but one thing in particular was the planet has survived for a long time the planet will be fine but if we want to exist in the life we've all become accustomed to as humans then we have to yeah, create change mm. um, and he put up a picture of a, a Model Y on the screen and he said last month was the first time ever in the world that the best-selling car in the world was an electric one. And he said I, he doesn't really care much for Elon Musk, despite him being a fellow Canadian, but he just said at least that shows that there's a willingness from people mm. to kind of go, right, we can't keep burning things. Um, the other thing about hydrogen cars, actually, is it uses 10% of the raw materials when it comes to the battery production. So cobalt and lithium, uh, much, much smaller amounts, which obviously has less of an impact on the world, um, on, on the planet. So it's not cheap right now. It's not gonna be, this is like, this is one of 100 cars the BMW have made. Yeah. So this is not a mass produced thing by any stretch. It's not quite here yet. Uh, it is the future potentially, um, working in a hybrid way, no pun intended with uh, standard electric powered cars but um, I drive a hydrogen X5 would you? I certainly drive a hydrogen X5 it's right it. fascinating stuff yeah. yeah and it's comfy Yeah, and it's big and it's quiet like everything else in the range but 
just gets on with the job. You imagine the people who don't have access to electric charge points, their own home domestic ones, yeah. apartment users and things. They're the kind of people who might want this because you just go to a fuel station, you wouldn't, but you're still decarbonizing the fleet. You're still running on zero emissions here. You know, but you just don't have to worry about charging up or try to overstay your welcome at a fast charge point, as we've come across it a couple of times. Yeah, that's how, how long will you be? Yeah, that's crap. <laughs> Four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> We're we've going had to a very careful experience <laughs> of that. Check out our podcast. We do a podcast. We need to do it more frequently, I know. Uh, but we will discuss this. We'll actually have one of the experts that we met yeah. from, uh, what's again, Air Products. Air Products. It's, it sounds like a very generic name. But yeah. it's, an, it's an American company. It's been in Europe for about 65 years. So the country says a UK and Irish company, but it's an American company actually. And they exclusively work in hydrogen terms uh, and zero emission, well, car, low carbon emission stuff. Hydrogen is not zero emissions, making it itself. but. If you count in how electricity is made, it's probably equivalent mm. amount of CO2 that comes out of hydrogen as out of electricity. It all depends. People who like, really like EVs tend to like Excel. They like spreadsheets and, you know, graphs and charts and things. And they can essentially prove anything, you know, because everything's great in the world as long as it's powered by electricity. But this is powered by electricity. just uses hydrogen fuel cells to make it happen. Oh, and Rowan Atkinson, if you're watching this video, I, I understand what you were trying to say. Me too. So. I thought he made some really valid points in his article, but of course... He's out of touch with the world, isn't he? That's Washed up reckless. comedian. Washed yeah. up. <laughs> I know, yeah. And he loves cars. And a petrol head, which seems to be used as a derogatory term in his favour, <laughs> even though the man who owns a McLaren F1. Pretty Ready? Sure. Ooh, the power! The speed! Hydrogen! And right. no fear, because we have a full tank, we're not worried about electricity, we're okay, we can keep on trucking. As long as we stay near a hydrogen fuel station. Incoming bend. What's right. a serious bend doing? We've got to go catch a flight. Um, yeah, we're late. Thanks for listening to us waffle on about hydrogen. Uh, and if you've got thoughts on it, good, bad, you think electric only is the way future, uh, the way forward, whatever, uh, leave some comments down below. Do leave a comment. Thank you. Bye. Isn't the road names really confusing? A308 and A30 and uh, I don't know. Just keep it simple in Ireland. M1. M1. <laughs> M50. <laughs> N4. <laughs> and the N17. I bet you no one, like the Saw Doctors have a song about it. No one in England <laughs> did a song called the A30. They just didn't like. We're going to Windsor. That's what he said. Windsor's Legoland is up to. We're going to Legoland. Now it's a vlog. <laughs> yeah. We should drop into El Sausage Fingers because he's a big petrol head. God, yeah. When do we make a Prince Charles is a personal collection. Sorry, King Charles is a personal collection of cars <laughs> worth uh, six million, I think. <laughs> I'm getting lost again. I better go. You called him Sausage Fingers. Then he called him Sorry, King Charles. Oh, sorry, like King Charles. <laughs> but Sausage Fingers. Yeah, but when this video goes out, we'll have left the country. It'll be grand. <laughs> they won't us. No, England, you are beautiful. Like, look at this. In fairness, it is a beautiful country. It's nice. They, 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 the English maintain, preserve what they've got incredibly well. They make it look really well done and beautiful walls. And yeah. They don't let you knock things down or change. Ireland just demolishes it, put up an apartment block. And they love queuing in airports at passport control. Jeez. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>